Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Borst with the Mike Borst channel. Thank you for watching. We're working on a Mercruiser Outdrive lower unit, and we're basically in the process of rebuilding it. In this video, we're going to show you how to remove the internal pinion gear. Let's get started. All right, DIYers at the workstation now, and again, we're going to show you how to remove your pinion gear in your lower unit. We've got a Mercruiser Alpha 1 Gen 1. We have been busy, DIYers. There is our upper unit already all rebuilt and ready to be put back together once the lower unit is complete. And scrolling above is a link to a video that will bring you up to speed with where we're at right now. We removed the propeller, additional thrust washers, and internal bearing carrier. And continuing on with some parts. On the left-hand side, 89-101-18, that is our drive shaft retainer wrench. And below that is the actual drive shaft nut or adapter. And to the right, B69-5248, that is a very important wrench or tool that is going to slide over the propeller shaft and in the lower unit all the way to make contact with the pinion gear nut. Coming to the top of the lower unit again, there is the drive shaft. And it feeds all the way into the actual drive shaft retainer nut and into the lower portion of the unit. And you can see the word off with a arrow pointing counterclockwise to loosen. However, Right behind that is our shift shaft. And before moving on, we want to verify that the entire lower unit and gear settings are in the neutral setting. In other words, not in forward gear nor in reverse gear. And in our case right now, it is in gear. So we are going to come up top and shift it counterclockwise away from the gear. Come down below and the propeller shaft is in neutral, not in reverse nor forward. Next, we need to open some parts. We're going to open the adapter nut and retainer wrench. At this point, I've got the parts unpackaged and I do want to show you one thing. You can see the upper pinion gear and nut. You can see the propeller shaft feeding through the clutch dog and then that gear. And as I spin this, nothing's moving. It is now safe to continue. What we'll do next is grab the retainer wrench and there is the shape of it. It's got a half inch connection for a ratchet. We are going to carefully shift this up and slide it over the drive shaft. And all the way down to the retainer nut and we will align it properly as shown here. What I'll do next is grab my half inch socket. Next I'll grab that adapter and carefully align the splines and shift it onto the drive shaft splines as shown here. And taking a step back, here is how we have everything configured at this point. We need to loosen up that retainer nut two to three times only. Any more than that will disrupt the project. To reposition the camera and everything is ready to go, I'm gonna grab the lower unit with my left arm and hand to support it and try to loosen this retainer nut with my right hand and arm with the ratchet. And it might be tough. Yep, mine is. And that's not coming loose. So I'm going to grab my rubber mallet for help and give it a couple friendly taps. And she's loose. From here again, reference that word off and the arrow and I'm going to turn two to three times. I'll probably do two. There's one. There's two and maybe I'll go two and a half. Right there. Feeding off the top portion of the lower unit, we are going to go inside the lower unit at this point. And as you can see, again, you've got the propeller shaft feeding into the clutch dog. Directly above that is your pinion gear on top, and below that right there is your pinion gear nut. And we need to remove that. And I've opened up this part right here. You'll notice it has MC1 and MR. And the third one is also MR. And ours is, again, Alpha 1 Gen 1, and our specific serial number is an MR. In addition, I've got our new bearing carrier. We will need that. Most people use the old one. However, unfortunately, again, ours is destroyed and not able to be used. And I have a big 32 inch socket here and that is going to feed up and onto that right there. And I am going to carefully, again, the MR in our case, will be in the direction and basically mating with the pinion gear nut. I'm going to carefully, without damaging anything, slide this over the propeller shaft and down the shaft and over the clutch dog. And what I'll have to do is pull up on the drive shaft to properly seat that tool on the pinion gear nut. I definitely do not want to leave this part out. I actually grabbed some gear lube and lubricated the entire inner portion here because your entire clutch dog is going to slide into this area right here. And if your clutch dog is not lubricated with gear lube, it'll be a tight fit. So again, an important step. So again, I'm going to carefully pull up on the drive shaft up here. And as I do that, I'm going to look deep into the lower unit and slide this tool onto the retainer nut. Let's go back inside the lower unit 
and I want to show you the tool in place. As you can see, you basically can no longer see the pinion gear nut. And if I go up top and rotate the drive shaft, it is locked in place. In addition, it's important to ever so slightly adjust the drive shaft to align that pinion gear nut in a position where you can efficiently slide that tool in place and lock that nut and gear as well as shaft in place. Next, I grabbed our brand new bearing carrier. I actually lubricated the internal oil seals with the same gear lube as I did with the internal adapter or pinion gear tool. And that will come in handy because this actual propeller shaft gets to a point where it bevels up and is larger in diameter. And when the oil seals meet that point, you will have to give it a little bit of friendly force to shift the bearing carrier up onto that larger diameter portion of the shaft. And we are doing this for two reasons. Number one, it's going to help support and stabilize the propeller shaft. And number two, it's going to help keep the actual tool properly aligned and secured to that pinion gear nut. And we are going to install the bearing carrier backwards. And there's the point where it meets. And again, just a little bit of friendly force. I'll support the back portion. And she is in and flush and mating with the tool. From here, we'll go up top and loosen up the drive shaft. However, I do want to show you a close-up view of where we are at this point. And we are going to come up top and I've got that big socket on the spline adapter. And we are not going to turn the retainer nut. We are only going to turn the shaft. Coming up top, no need to rush this step. Be precise and patient. And I've got my half inch ratchet here. I'm going to shift this up onto the 32 inch socket. And counterclockwise, we are going to loosen that pinion gear nut. And it may be on there pretty good. I've got my left arm and hand supporting the lower unit. And yes. Wow, that's on there tight. I may need to grab my rubber mallet and give it some friendly taps. And I think it's loose. I'm going to reposition the lower unit and stand. Straighten it back out. Double check down below. Everything still looks good. And I'm going to, again, counterclockwise, remove that pinion gear nut. And it basically came to a stop. I'm going to take out the ratchet and socket. Carefully remove the bearing carrier. Set that aside. Coming back inside and as you can see there is a large separation between the pinion gear and the nut itself. From here we are going to remove this pinion gear nut tool and as you pull this out again that clutch dog is in the internal portion of this tool and when shifting the tool outward the clutch dog will shift out with the tool until it meets the stopping point on the propeller shaft. At that point you need to give it some friendly jolts to remove this tool from the clutch dog. And again supporting the lower unit and giving the tool some friendly jolts to shift it off the inner clutch dog. There we go. Back inside, and as you can see, as I rotate the propeller shaft and the clutch dog, the pinion gear nut is completely removed from the drive shaft's thread. And I'll basically have to just kind of maneuver the propeller shaft in a way to give me the clearance to pull that nut out. And I may also have to pull up on the drive shaft above. Back to the workbench, and there it is, the pinion gear nut, and it had a washer that was placed in between the nut and pinion gear itself. And in our case, it didn't happen this way, it should. In most cases, you should use this tool to again lock this nut in place and rotate the drive shaft counterclockwise to a point where you can basically remove this tool and the nut itself will come out with it. And you can just pull it out of the tool. However, again, in our case, it didn't happen, but it was extremely easy to remove after removing that tool. It was already separated from the thread. Back inside the lower unit, I want to show you a view with the pinion nut and washer removed. Again, above is the pinion gear, and directly below that is your clutch dog and propeller shaft. Now, DIYers, it's very important to know at this point, even though you have the nut and washer removed, that pinion gear will not come out. There is no way you can actually maneuver that pinion gear down and off the actual threaded portion of the lower shaft and around that clutch dog as well as propeller shaft and pull it all the way out. Out. You have to remove the upper drive shaft because again, that lower thread that the pinion nut just unscrewed off from will not give you the clearance to shift that pinion gear down and out. You have to remove the drive shaft by pulling the drive shaft all the way out and through the splines of the pinion gear itself to get that clearance. And at this point, it is a good time to shift the clutch dog forward toward the forward gear to give you better clearance to remove that upper pinion gear. Back to the top, we are going to remove the adapter socket, set that aside, and we are now going to continue loosening up the retainer nut. And and I can do this by hand without the actual half inch ratchet. Once you got it all the way unscrewed from the thread, go ahead and remove your wrench. Set that in a safe location. And I just have a little pick tool. I'm just going to put this in carefully and pull up on the retainer. As shown here. And there it is. 
Retainer knot even has the part number on it, which is cool. We'll set that aside. And down below, you have a bearing that seats into a carrier or bearing cup, whatever you want to call it. And we can carefully pull up on the drive shaft to remove it from the lower unit. Wow, it's in there really tight. There we go. There's the carrier, there's the bearing, and there's the lower spline and thread that feed through the lower pinion gear. I'll set that in a safe location. And to a closer view of the lower unit portion that the drive shaft slides down and into, as you can see down below, that is the pinion bearing that the drive shaft slides through, as well as the pinion gear. And what we'll do is we will now go down below and inside the lower unit and again push that clutch dog back and rotate the pinion gear. And as you saw just by shifting the propeller shaft to the left and slightly up and down for a bit, there's the pinion gear right there. Very lubricated which is a good thing. And overall it's in good condition. I'll set that right next to the drive shaft. And DIYers, that is it. Do us a favor, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And hey, if you're curious on joining us for the remainder of the project, definitely check out the link scrolling above. It'll take you to a video where we pick up right where we left off. Hope to see you there.